Oh hi everyone and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. We just caught me in the middle of looking at these trees that I ordered from an online company. Now in this video I thought I'll explain how you can go about creating really budget bonsai trees from starter material that looks something like this. Right, so all of these trees came from an online tree supplier uh, and not a bonsai specialist. So as we could expect, you know, a lot of these trees were field grown, uh, probably grown from cuttings or seeds. But if you do it this way, you can come about some really interesting varieties of trees that are really inexpensive. And most of these cost less than five pounds each. So if we just look in our pot here, this is just my wash bucket I put these in because they arrived during the week and I wasn't able to film a video straight away. So I've saved them for the weekend. And uh, if you just untangle that root on there, we can see this one is a red oak, very healthy root system on that. Quite a, a long, tall, skinny tree, but very nice tree. Let's just take a look at the other one. God, the roots are still coming. Wait, there you go. Let's take a look at these. We have two, I ordered two of these. And uh, this is a, a Judas tree. Again, nice root system on that one. Let's just take a look at the last ones. So these are tulip trees. Again, a lot of roots on those. Very healthy looking trees and quite some length to the stems. Yeah, so like I said, all of these trees are picked up for less than five pounds. So we just take a quick look at these trees again. Uh, the top two here, these are Judas trees. I picked these up for only two pound 50 each. So the two of them for five pounds, ain't bad. Very nice looking trees. Uh, take a look at this one. I think this is the red oak. Again, that one was only one pound 50, one pound 50 for that tree. Fantastic value. And then you have this one or these two, the Judas trees. Again, these are only two pound 50 each. So you think all together, £11.50 for this nice collection of trees. And again, this is a real bargain way of getting, you know, starter trees and growing them on and turning them into really nice bonsai trees. So the thing with trees like this is, I think what we do, we take that tag off, just use these pruners just to do that. It's like so, and let's take the, the string off too, just like that to separate these two trees. Now. The big decision, oh hang on, there's a bit of bit of cord just up here too. Just get my pruners on that and snip that like that. Oh, it's being persistent. There you go, take that off like that. So the big question when you have a tree like this is, how far back do you cut the root system and how tall do you want the overall tree? Now, the other big question is, how thick would you like the trunk to be? Now, of course, if you would like quite a big, thick trunk, then you need to allow these trees to grow. Um, of course, if you just want to keep the trees or the trunks this thick, then you don't need to worry. You could cut it down here, cut the roots down, put that in a bonsai pot, and well, hey, you have a little bonsai tree. But I would like to have thicker trunks. Now, what I want to do is I want to allow these trees or these trunks to get thicker. So what I'm going to do is just tidy up the root base just a little bit and plant them into one of these plant pots and just allow them to grow and grow and grow and get thicker and thicker and thicker. So I think with this red oak, let's just slip the tag off. This has a lot of root on it. Now, do we need the tap root to be quite that long? Well, no, we don't. Let's get the concave cutters in here and I'm gonna cut that just in here. And that is the bottom of that tap root cut off. We don't need that. And there's only a few roots on that anyway. So this is gonna be plenty. I think what we'll do is just tidy this up just a little bit. Cut back that, cut back this one here, that one there, and that one there, and then that should be plenty. So for this, I didn't want to use my usual um, bonsai medium mix or soil mix. So instead, all I'm using is this mix, which is 50% cocoa mix and 50% perlite. And that is going to be perfect for these little trees. And I think that's that little tree all potted up. Now, I don't know about you, but I always forget the name of trees and plants. So what I like to do is just reach down here. I like to use these little white name tags. So this tree is a red oak. So red oak. And we just put that 
just in there so that we can remember what tree this is. Right, so next up we have these tulip trees. Now, I was over in my local park the other day and down there they have this fantastic looking uh, tulip tree. It's actually planted by the late Queen Elizabeth II. So I did a short video, so I'm going to play that here whilst I'm pruning up the roots on these two trees. Well, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this here is a tulip tree and uh, quite a magnificent looking tulip tree at that. But there's an interesting history to this tree. So if we just take a look at this plaque just here, you can see this little round plaque with a crack through the middle. Uh, you can't quite read what it says around the outside. But it basically says, the then known, uh, well, she was then known as Princess Elizabeth, who then later became Queen Elizabeth II, planted this tree on the 18th of May, 1951. And uh, what a magnificent looking tree this has grown on to become. So you can see that is a fantastic looking tulip tree planted in 1951. So over all of those years, that's grown into that majestic looking tree. So uh, yeah, it's gonna take many, many years before these grow into that, but you know, we'll plant these up and see if we can grow them into a miniature version of that tree. So I'll just show you real quick what I did. I just uh, trimmed back some of these roots, trimmed back that middle root. We had a bit of a trident thing going on here. You don't particularly want that in, in, in your roots or on your branches. So I've cut back that left a little stub for die back and then all of these roots are looking pretty healthy looking quite nice so I think that's ready to be potted on and then if we just take a look at this one much the same left a bit more root on this one just trimmed the tap root and trimmed some of these roots here that's bags of root for this tree to recover grow on and become a nice tall tree with a nice thick trunk you can also see there's a bud starting to pop there so yeah, it's a fantastic time to be doing this kind of work. And then just plant this up in the usual way. And again, you don't need to be too specific with root placement and stuff like that. I mean, we, we ultimately want these to get nice and tall and nice and big. You can play around with the roots and start styling them when you have this, you know, as a bonsai, you know, when you cut it down and start styling it. But at this stage, it's just a whip. You know, it's got a long way to go before it becomes a credible bonsai tree. All we want is the thickness of the trunk. We can care less about everything else. You know, we just want this, this trunk to thicken up. So we just position the roots in a reasonable way and just allow the tree to grow. Now, I know you could say that a better way of doing this would be to plant these in the ground. And looking at that tulip tree that's planted in my, or growing in my local park, you can yeah see how big these trees would get if you did such a thing. But in our garden, I, you know, it, it, I could plant these in the garden, but I, I like, I have this area, I have this little bonsai area that I have here. And ideally I'd like to keep everything bonsai associated in this little area. Um, for start planting trees around the garden, they're just going to get swallowed up by the garden. And, you know, you never know where life's going to take you or if you're going to move or anything like that. So keeping everything in pots like this just makes it a little bit more portable if anything does happen. and it just uh, keeps it a little bit more convenient, I guess. Keeps it a little bit more in under your control. So that's that little tree all done. Uh, I think I just put that just over here. And then we'll do the same for this one. This one, I think will go in that pot just fine. Might trim these back just a little bit because they're too long to go in my pot. So yeah, I think that's gonna be absolutely fine. So much the same as before, a little bit of our mix. So this is a 50% mix between perlite and cocoa. Uh, why did I decide to use this over compost or my regular bonsai mix? Well, my regular bonsai mix is made up a few, of a few other components that it, it can be a little bit expensive to keep on mixing that up. And for trees like this that you just want to grow on, uh, this is just a bit more of an affordable way of doing it. Uh, the other reason is I have a lot of this cocoa mix and I, I like it, I like it as a medium. And another big benefit of using cocoa is that it's inert. So it's neither alkaline nor acidic. And for these trees, I know some of them, I think it's the Judas trees, prefer more acidic soil rather than alkaline. So growing in this mix is gonna benefit them more than if I planted it in the regular, well, in the regular compost or my usual bonsai mix, which does lean a little bit more towards the alkaline side. So just the same as what we did before, just position the roots, have them going downwards 
at this stage we're not worried about any kind of radial root system or you know surface roots and a barium or anything like that They're, these are just little whips we just want these to grow and uh, as you backfill in your pot you, you could be fancy and go around with a chopstick but as I say I just prefer just to tap the side and that ensures that the soil is leveled out and it's in contact with all of those roots and you just do the same until the pot is filled Let's go all the way to the top, just like so. A couple of roots there that just don't want to go down. Let's do that. There you go, that's better. And that is going to be fine. Now you could argue that this is a, a little bit wobbly in the pot. I think what I might do for all of these is just put a few stones on top just to hold them in place. And I'm doing this at the end of March, so it will only be a few weeks before these start putting out roots and growing well and shoots and buds and things will start popping up top that these will establish themselves in these pots but for the time being I might just have to hold them in place with a couple of stones so that's the two tulip trees all planted up now again like I said before <laughs> these just look like whips and uh, with my memory and the amount of trees that I have I'm going to forget what these are so if you just reach back here again I get a couple of my little tags just going to write tulip trees on each one Stick that in just so that I remember what these trees are. So just like before, we just put tulip tree and stick that in there like so. So next up are the Judas trees. Now these have already been root pruned. I'd imagine when they dug these out the ground, you know, the suppliers that I bought these from, when they dug these out the ground, they cut back the roots and trimmed them out. So yeah, I don't think we're going to have to do too much root pruning to these. So we can quite simply take our plant pot just stick them in and grow them on. So a little bit of the cocoa mix in the bottom of the pot. And as you can see, there's not too much or, or too many long roots, I should say, on the bottom of this tree. So we can quite simply just put that in there and allow that to do its thing. So I think what I do, I just add a stone to each one of these just to hold them in the pots. Now, of course, these have just been freshly potted on. So they are a little bit wobbly in their pots. And you can see you just have to use anything. This is a piece of brick. As long as it does the job, it doesn't matter too much. This isn't a permanent measure by any stretch. This is just to keep them in the pots, keep them nice and sturdy and straight, and just allow for those roots to develop. You can see that? That... It's a little bit too big, but you know, it's, it's going to work. It's going to hold the, the tree in, in place. Right, now we can do the watering. So it's always important to water your trees in very well and give them a good soaking. Oh, so that's, that's fantastic. Five new little bonsai trees or, or future bonsai trees in development and all potted up. And um, yes, it's an excellent project to, to have. I mean, this is a really good way of starting young trees. And as I say, most of these were less than five pounds, well, actually, well, less than three pounds each. Now, one was 150, the other two were two pounds 50 each. Really bargain trees and uh, a really good way to get yourself started in the world of bonsai. If you can't afford those you know more majestic trees i mean i know some people that have spent 100 150 200 some some even 500 a thousand pounds for a tree but if you do it this way you can see a tree on its little journey and see it go from a whip into you know quite a majestic looking bonsai tree anyway guys uh, thanks for joining me on this one kind of a simple one just potting up trees but you know i, I like sharing these things with you and um yeah i hope you enjoyed it I hope you try this yourself Anyway, until next time, take it easy, have a great day, and I will catch you on the next one.